We're installing elders and deacons today, and, and because we don't want to be here until, you know, after lunch, Pastor Jen asked me to keep this message kind of brief. So I thought that I would start with the so what. I thought that I would start with the takeaway. And the takeaway is this, friends. Jesus spent time in the crowds. He spent time teaching them and loving them and healing them. Jesus spent time with people, all kinds of people. Not a certain kind of people, not a people that already did or said certain kinds of things. He spent time in the crowd with people. And because we follow Jesus, and because Jesus modeled what he expects from his people, we need to spend time in the crowd. We need to spend time with people. With people that we don't know. With people who aren't like us. Maybe with people that we feel a little uncomfortable with at first. But that's where we learn to love, and that's where people can learn about Jesus and can learn to love Jesus. Now, as I say this, I say this fully recognizing that we're all gifted differently. We're installing elders and deacons this morning, the leaders of the church, and certainly leaders are expected to follow Jesus, to do what Jesus would do, but we're all, we're all ministers in God's kingdom. And so we're all called to be part of the crowd. This morning, I'll be reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 14 through 21. Now, this text follows the time that Jesus spent in the wilderness. And Pastor Jen talked about that, I believe, last week, the time that Jesus spent being tempted. And now we're moving into a new era in Jesus' time on this earth. We're moving into the beginning of his ministry. So let me read Luke's Gospel, verses, chapter 4, verses 14 through 21. Hear God's word for you today. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. My friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Theologian Daryl Bach had, had this to say about this matter of, of teaching, of Christian teachings. He said it's not merely a matter of teaching doctrine and facts, but also of relating that teaching to life, to putting flesh and blood on it. You see, when we talk about Jesus, when we share friendship with people, we're going heart to heart. It's not just from the mind. You see, there has to be some kind of relational aspect to it. Otherwise, people could just go to the lifestyle section of Barnes & Noble and find what they're looking for. But this, this reading today, this is where, where Jesus begins his ministry, his teaching in this synagogue. This is the beginning of his mission. And the church's mission is an extension of Jesus' mission. And we, here as we sit together and as we go out into the world and stand individually, we 
are the church. So as Jesus began his ministry in the synagogue, he opened the scroll and he declared that the Holy Spirit had anointed him to bring good news to the poor. He came to proclaim the release of captives, to let the oppressed free. And when we take into account all of the gospel, we see that throughout his ministry, he went to the poor. He went to those who had need. He went to the outcast. He went to people who were very different from the religious folk of the time. He didn't stay in the synagogue. He went out. He went out and hung out with people. And so the news about Jesus' compassion, about his power to heal, it spread very quickly. And if we look at Matthew 9, 36, we see that crowds of desperate people, they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd, flocked to him in droves. And Jesus stayed in those crowds. But even then, he reached out to individuals. He had heart connections with people. I think, I think about that brave woman who reached out and just touched Jesus' cloak. I think about Zacchaeus, the hated tax collector, whom Jesus took a moment. He paused. He paused. And he encouraged him. Jesus spent time in the crowd teaching, loving, healing. And this is the example that we're called to follow. Now we're all gifted differently. Some of us are healers, some are encouragers, some are teachers, some are dishwashers, some, some just have the gift of being present with a person who is sad. In the church, we have so many gifts that are given to individuals. And together, we form the body. You know, the reality is that even Jesus didn't heal everyone. Jesus didn't personally encourage everyone. And there's not a single person here in this sanctuary that can do that either. And yet as a church, when we go from here out into the crowd, we can teach and love and heal so many. We can share the news of Jesus, not, not just through our words, which are important, but through our actions, through our hospitality, through the things we do, just like Jesus taught. Jesus taught by his example, not just his words. Jesus teaches us how to be faithful servants of God and of people, how to love God and people. When Jesus was, was arrested and taken away, one of his best buddies, Peter, who swore that he would be with Jesus no matter what, betrayed Jesus. He denied even knowing Jesus. And Peter was was heartbroken about that. He was sad. I mean, imagine, imagine betraying your friend, your mentor, your savior. But after Jesus was resurrected, there was a time when he was having fellowship with the disciples on a beach and he had a private conversation with Peter. And he said to Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Peter said, yes, I love you. And Jesus said, then feed my lambs. Jesus said to Peter, if you love me, go out in the crowd. Go be with the people, love them, heal them, teach them. And we know Peter did that. So as Jesus spent time with people, loving them, getting to know them, hearing their stories. We are called to do no less, using the gifts and the abilities that God has given us. You know, times have changed everywhere, out there, in here, and we have to keep our hearts open to the ministries that God, that Jesus continues to give us, and we each have a ministry and I believe that God is going to send us in directions that we cannot anticipate. And these directions are going to take so many different forms. And I encourage you, please 
be open to that. God will equip you where he calls you. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that it's always going to be comfy or that you're never going to have that awkward feeling where you feel like you're just in a little too deep and you're like, Father, please help me. But he will equip you where you're going. Daryl Bach wrote, changes in ministry can take various forms. And I know of many people with opportunities to minister who say, well, I don't, I don't have any experience in that. And in the process, they may be turning away from something fresh that God may do. You know, when we read in Acts about when God opened the gospel, salvation to the Gentiles, to those other people, and you can see that in Acts 10 and 11, God had to reveal and support that revelation with his continued direction. It was new. It was different. It was unexpected. It was a whole new crowd. And here we are. We have to be open. We have to be open-hearted and open-handed when it comes to our faith. It's only the church that allows itself to be led into reaching out to people, not, not by changing the message, but by maybe changing the method that's going to reach deeply into that crowd. So remember the takeaway. Jesus spent time with people, and we're called to do no less. Peace be with you. Amen.